It's two days before a camp of British and American troops are due to move out to Iraq to fight in the Second Gulf War. Sergeant Henry Cheval is drilling his group of soldiers to get them ready for an audience with the American General Arthur Mother. Attention, present arms! General Mother prepares for his speech. I've been gathering here today because in two days' time we will be meeting the American troops in Iraq. Before I give you a briefing, I have been asked to introduce two new members to your camp. Private Stephen Blake steps forward. This is Private Blake. He will be in Hut 1. Hey. And who you, don't I? See long, Steve, who play. This is Captain Sanders from Tennessee. <coughs> Quiet, please. The chain of command will be as follows. I will be in charge of the American half of the camp, but Captain Stanley Bates is my second in command. Colonel Ring will be in charge of the British half of the camp, with Captain Sanders as his second in command. They will be in charge of three other captains. Each of these captains will be in charge of three sergeants. Each sergeant will be in charge of one hut. Ideally, each hut should consist of 20 men. However, due to lack of men in the British half of the camp, there will only be 10 men per hut. When we reach Iraq, we will begin desert combat training. This will last up to two weeks. After that, we will wait for the orders to attack. Now, there's no denying some of you will be killed. I can't you wait. <laughs> I won't tell you again. The thing everyone must remember. At bad times, is what we're fighting for. America. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Get back to your huts. I will give you two private br briefings once you are cleaning them out. And I want those toilets to shine! Son and Blake walk into their hut. Blake grabs the dustpan and brush and begins sweeping the floor. Hey, you, you don't need to do that, you know. What? Of course I do. No, you don't. Why not? I doubt we have them all. What the? You don't know? No what? Nobody's told you. Told me what? About Cheval. What about Cheval? Well, Cheval is really a... Private son, I see you are telling our new recruit about our little agreement. I was just about to, sir, yes. <laughs> I don't suppose you would mind if I told him. No, well, you go ahead. All my life, I have felt as though... I am in the wrong body. Two years ago, I decided to leave the army and have a sex change. I followed all the procedures, I handed in my notice, and two days later, I received a letter telling me that there was something wrong with my immigration papers. This meant that I had to remain in the army until all the papers are sorted out. Right, so what's the problem? The problem is, I have already had one operation. If this is found out, I will be removed from the army and deported back to France. So what does this have to do with us? Well, one day, when I was in the showers... I caught him removing the evidence. Yes, and you told the entire hut, didn't you? Sorry. This brings us to our little agreement. If everyone agrees to keep my little secret... ...to themselves... ...and behave themselves... ...in front of the officers... ...I will promise not to drill... ...too hard... And punish to harsh. 
It's two days later and the camp of British and American troops are on the aeroplane bound for Iraq. Colonel Ring is sitting by the window. He is holding a brand new voice sympathizer. His vocal cords have been damaged during the previous war. Captain Sanders sits down next to him. Colonel Ring types into this voice synthesizer. I am sorry to have said his reason for Captain Saunders. I am Captain Saunders. I am sorry I did not recall his. Colonel Ring pushes himself closer to the window. He seems repulsed by Captain Saunders. On another part of the plane, Sun and Blake reminisce about where they met. So where do I know you from then? You don't remember? No, that's why I'm asking. Well, I certainly remember you changed my life. How did I do that then? I came out. When I met you, I came out. Before I met you, I felt trapped and depressed. Now I feel free. Right. So why did you join the army? Well, after I came out, I decided that I wanted to travel and see the world. I never thought I'd get to see you again. Just brilliant. Just be careful. There's a lot more to being a gay in the army than you might imagine. <laughs>